In this Godot tutorial, I'll teach you how to program click and move functions so you can use your mouse to move your player around in your game world. Let's get started. So the first thing we have to do is we have to program that the game listens to our mouse. For that, we're gonna to go to project, project settings, and under the input map, we'll add a new action and we'll call it click, very easy. We'll add this little plus here, we'll add a mouse button and we uh, use the left, left mouse button for that. It's quite common in games to use the left mouse button. So let's not make it any difficult or more difficult than we have to. Then of course, we have to add some code. I'll be adding that code to this player, this sort of player node that I've pre-created. There's gonna be a kinematic body called player. It's gonna be having a sprite, which is a sprite sheet. We have a coalition shape, we have a camera, and we have an animation player to handle some animations. If you don't know how to do any of that, I'll link a tutorial down below. This tutorial is gonna be focusing on movement only, so let's go and work on that. To get us started, I've made sure that I've added a script with some standard elements already. We got a couple of variables and a couple of sort of empty functions. Let's go over them real quick and then we'll start coding ourselves. First of all, we have a maximum speed of the player and a current speed of the player. And we have an acceleration, which is gonna be making sure that that zero is slowly gonna be approaching our maximum speed of 400. We're gonna distill a move direction out of our movement function as input for our animation player. And we have a Boolean called moving, so we know when we actually have to run the movement function, when we have to reset the speed back to zero whenever the player stood still. And we'll also use it as input for our animation player, so it knows when to play the idle animation or the walking animation. Then we have the destination, which is gonna be where we click with the mouse. And we have the movement, which is basically gonna be a result of a calculation between the current player position, the destination, and the speed with which we are moving. Uh, that movement is gonna be pushed to a move and slide function in the movement loop. Now, as for functions, we have a couple of standard ones. These are the three on the top here, and we have two defined ones, which are gonna be the movement loop and the animation loop. Um, the easy part first, we have the process function handling the animation loop. The animation loop is already pre-created as this is a movement tutorial and not a animation tutorial. I'll only be talking about those animations at the end of the tutorial. Uh, the physics process is going to be handling the movement loop. That's what we'll be co coding in this tutorial. And then very importantly, we have the unhandled input event function. That is basically going to be listening to our mouse click. Now you have two input uh, functions, standard functions in Go. It's going to be the input function and the unhandled input function. Whenever you program mouse movement, it's very important to use the unhandled input function because otherwise what you could end up with is that whenever you're in a user interface panel, maybe an inventory or an equipment panel, and you click some buttons that your player is going to be moving in the background because it's going to be consuming what's going to be taking that input. With a unhandled input function, your movement code will only listen to any sort of input signal, input event that has not been consumed by the engine yet or by the game yet. That way, whenever you're fiddling around in menus or in user interface panels, you won't be moving in the background and that would of course be undesired. So that's the preset of this project. That's where we start with the tutorial. Pause for a moment if you wanna take this over and then we can start by programming this unhandled input. For our input, we have three lines of code, very easy. We're gonna listen to if the event is action press click, and click is the name of the action we've programmed earlier in the project settings. We set two variables, we set moving to true, because we have to start moving somewhere, so that'll be this variable, and we set the destination, the vector two right there. We set that equal to the get global mouse position. Now, with that set, we can start working on the movement and accelerating our character up. So at the start of this movement loop, we have to be calculating the speed so we know how we're accelerating our character up. We need that speed as input to calculate the actual movement that needs to happen. So what we do is that if moving is false, we're not moving, obviously speed is zero. Else we take the speed and we add the acceleration times delta. So we take this 1200 from acceleration, we multiply it by delta from the physics process engine, which is being passed into the movement loop, which is then received by the movement loop, that delta is going to be really small. So this will come out maybe as a maybe 20 or 30 or something like that. We're gonna be adding that to the speed on every frame. So slowly we go 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, etc. And that on every frame. So that goes pretty fast. If the speed were to ever exceed the maximum speed, which is of course undesired, then we set the speed back to the maximum speed. 
Now we have the speed, so we can start calculating the actual movement. To calculate the movement, we need one line of code and I'm adding a second line of code to distill the movement direction for our animation player. If you're not working with animations yet, you can skip the second line. So for the movement, we take the position of the player. Remember, we're on the kinematic body. We're on the script of the player. So the position is going to be the X and Y vector two location where the player is. And we take the direction towards the destination. So we, we calculate um, basically the angle at which it has to move and then we multiply that but with the speed. Now for the movement direction, we're also going to be calculating the angle between the position and the destination, and that is going to return us a radial, and we want to turn it into a degree as that works a little bit easier. How we're going to use that movement direction, like I said, will be coming at the end of this tutorial. Let's first focus on the movement. Now for the actual movement, we only need a couple of lines and that is that if the position destination to destination is bigger than five. So here we take the direction to the destination from the position and here we calculate the distance to. And if that distance is more than five pixels, then we're going to say that the movement is movement slide with movement. So here we call the movement slide movement and actually move our character based on that movement value we calculated right there. Else. If that destination to destination is less than five pixels, that is either when the player clicked very closely to the uh, to its own character, or if after the movement the uh, player has reached the destination, then we're going to set moving back to false. With moving setting movement back to false, we automatically on the next frame set the speed back to zero, so afterwards we can ramp up the acceleration again. So basically, this says the player stood still, so we set the speed back to zero. Now with that done, we can run this game and you'll see that when we're on the map, we can start moving by clicking anywhere and you can see that constantly we're accelerating back. If we continue clicking everywhere without ever standing still, that speed is going to be 400, the maximum speed. And whenever we stand still, we have to accelerate back up. Now with that, that looks pretty good. Let's have a look over at the animations, how we have done that, how we take all those values. And then we're at the end of this episode already. For the animations, what we're doing is we first define three variables, an animation direction, an animation mode, and we in the end have an animation as a result. We set them standard to south and idle. That way we have at least input on the very first frame when the game starts, else we're gonna run into an error. Then we take that move direction that we calculated earlier, which is going to be a degree. So that's gonna be from minus, sorry, from one to uh, 180, and then from minus 180, all the way back to minus one. That's how the movement works, That's or how this angle to point works. So we calculate that if the values are between um, a certain range, we know wh which animation we have to play. And I define my animations in wind directions. You can also uh, define them by top, down, bottom, right, left, right, top, bottom, whatever. Um, so I define them by wind direction. So what we do then is we take that moving, that same moving that we set true here and we set back to false over there. We take that moving and moving is true. We know we have to have the animation mode walk. And when moving is false, we know we have the animation mode idle. Then we um, build the animation. That's gonna be the variable that we define there. We build it up by taking the animation mode, for example, walk, we add an underscore, we add the animation direction, for example, Northwest. Then we push that animation to the animation player. Now, of course, our animation player has those animations right here. So here we have eight idols and eight walks, all with the eight different wind directions in which our sprite sheet is set up. So this is an eight directional sprite sheet. Now with that, we're always playing the right animation. Now, it is very important to note that whenever you're moving around, this character cannot see coalition shapes. So when I press here, it's just gonna be bumping against this house. It will slowly find its way around it through the move and slide function, although it, can't, it can get stuck, as you can see right here. In a next tutorial, I'll teach you how to include navigation to the pathing so that you can find a path around the coalition shape or in a navigation polygon to make sure that the player immediately moves towards the corner of the house instead of first bumping into the house straight on. That is going to be for our next episode, so I hope I'll see you there. 
That was it for today, guys. I hope you like it. And if you did, smash that like button, hit subscribe. Don't forget that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on that video where we include navigation to the pathing to make this movement smoother. Also, I'm really curious what you think about this tutorial. If you have ever seen any other of my tutorials, I've picked up the pace a little bit in this tutorial. I went over the functions and the different methods that I use a little bit faster than I do normally. Uh, I would really like some feedback on that. Is that good? Do you like that? Or would you like me to take more time to explain how things work exactly? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be looking forward to your feedback and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you later, guys.